Okay, so this is part two of uh, find the number of disks that are intersecting. This uh, performance improvement I actually found quite challenging. I got pretty close to the answer, but I had to look online in order to sort of determine the exact conditions to um, identify an intersection. All right, so uh, let's look at um, the diagram. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and keep it within our array. So we're going to be shrinking down the boundaries of our circles. So any circle that starts before zero is going to have a starting point of uh, zero. And any circle that goes beyond the last element will have their end point at um, the, la this, the location of the last uh the center point of the last circle. By doing that, we'll keep our intersection number of intersections the same, and we'll be able to represent um, and keep our uh, values within our arrays. Okay, so uh, here are the calculations I did initially in order to simplify it um, and come up with an equation that should be able to uh, solve this. So uh, what we're going to do in order to achieve our performance enhancement is keep track of the points where the circle starts and where the circle ends um, along the actual index. So here we have our diagram of our um, circles that intersect. And we have our x-axis, which has um, is labeled 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Our index over here is um, representative of that. And then underneath that, we have our array, which is passed in, an example array. And uh, this example array has um, uh, the circles with a radius of 1. The next circle has a radius of 5. The next circle has a radius of 2. The next circle has a radius of 1. The next circle has a radius of 4. And the next circle has a radius of 0. Based on that, what we're going to do is re isolate the start and end points based on um, this shrunken down diagram. As in, at point zero, at index zero, since we've shrunk, we've made all um, all circles that start before zero start at um, the index of zero. We'll take that starting position at zero. Um, so at zero, we have four circles starting. At position one, we have zero circles starting. At position two, as you can see here, we have one circle starting. At position three, we have no circles starting. So we have four, zero, um, two, we'll have one. At three, we have zero. At four, we have zero. And at five, we have one, right? OK. Now, our, for our endpoints, at one, we ha at zero, we have zero ending. At one, we have one circle ending. At two, we have zero circles endings. At three, we have zero circles endings. At four, we have two circles ending. And at five, we have three circles ending. So if we look at that, we have four, we have five circles in total one, two, three, four, five, six circles. And we have six circles opening here and six circles closing here okay so those that's our start point so now let's walk through calculating the number of intersections so at point zero we have four circles opening and because they open at the same position the number of intersections um, we could calculate using Gauss's law, which is basically n times n 
minus 1 divided by 2. So um, the 0 here will represent the already open circles um, that will contribute to adding to the intersection. And currently, since our circles open here, we have 0 open circles. So um, before we start off, new old circle intersections is equal to 0. So this would be old circle intersections. And then afterwards, we'll set it to a point 0. After this um, process is done, we'll set the number of um, old circles um, that could contribute to an intersection to 4, because that's how many circles opened up. And now, because so this happens afterwards. So because of our formula, we know now that the intersections that happened with four circles starting at the same point is six. That's just how it works out, right? Is it? So zero times four is zero plus four, eight, 12 because we have four circles open. One, two, three, four. So that would be six, yep. Okay, at point one, nothing happens, but one circle closes. So the number of circles that would contribute to any new um, opening circles would be uh, three. So this does nothing to add to our final result. And then at position number two, we have one circle opening. So we'd have three times one, because this is the number of circles that will intersect with the new circle that opens, plus um, one times one minus one divided by two, which will give us zero, right? So, um, so our new um, intersections from this would actually be three plus six, uh, where three is the old value. We calculate a position zero, and uh, that would be nine. So now we're at nine intersecting points, right? So at P3, uh, nothing happens, but the number of circles that are open reduces by two, right? No, nothing happens here because nothing closes at three. At P4, um, two circles close, so four minus two, and that'll be two. And then finally at P5, let's look at our diagram. We have all the circles closing, but even before that happens, we have two circles open that's gonna intersect with uh, our new circle. So that would be two times one, uh, which is the one circle that opens, and then one times uh, one minus one uh, divided by two, and then uh, um, our new sum would be 9 plus the intersections that are open, occurred for the circle at position 5, and that would be 11, right? So to do this optimization, basically what we did is, one, we shrunk the actual circle, we pre-calculated um, all the start and end points at each point along the index, and then we Basically, from the start and end points, we calculated at each point or kept track of the number of open circles. And based on the number of open circles, um, whenever a new circle started, we calculated the number of intersections that um, occurred at that particular point.
So let's code this out. Right? Whoops. Okay. So we had our diagram and we have our values. Right? And these are the steps that we sort of predicted. This was a very challenging question. Well, optimization. I don't think actually solving it was difficult. The issue came from um, the performance improvements and just that figuring out that formula, right? So what we're going to do is steps, just to reiterate, we're going to um, calculate the start and end points to um, calculate the intersections. So here we should get O of N complexity because what we're doing is basically just um, using two loops, two separate loops. So let's start. So let's create our variable. This will be intersection Oh, that's equal to zero. We're not going to do anything with that. Then we need two more variables. Bring up a dot length. We'll fill it with zeros to start off. And this will be the points where the circle starts. have let circle and points start points and we will create another array. We're creating it the same size as the number of radius is given because we're going to be shrinking it, right? Alright, so then based on that we'll create our first for loop and this will calculate the start and end points. So IDX is equal to zero, that's the index, and IDX is less than a dot length. IDX plus plus. Okay, so let's create a variable. Start is equal to um, I minus a of i because if you recall a of i is the radius and i is the point the center point of that circle right and then we'll have our end which is a of i plus i okay so we do have a special condition to check for if start is less than zero set start equal to zero if end is greater than a dot length minus one end is equal to a dot length. This is a shrinking our circle if you recall circles as shown in this diagram. We took the top diagram and made it the bottom diagram. Because at the end of the point day we're just finding out the uh, the uh, intersections, right? Okay. So now let us set or increment our starts and our endpoint. And that's it, because the start will correspond to the position where the circle starts, and using that as an index, and the end will do the same for the end. So there, that is part one. Now we're going to have another variable, open inter, uh, open circles, right? Set this to zero. And now this first loop was to find start and end points of circles. The second loop 
is going to find um, calculate the intersecting sections of the circle, right? So now what we're going to do is the same thing. We're going to iterate through the circles. And so we're going to be getting our, if you recall here, we're going to be calculating the number of open and closed circles. So if So how will we code this out, right? If circle start point is not equal to zero, right? What we're going to do is calculate our result. So what we'll need is running intersections, right? So we also need a variable intersection count, which we calculated, defined at the top. So intersections count is equal to what? Intersection count would be equal to open circles times circle start points, right? So this would calculate intersections contributed by already open circles and now we need to know intersections contributed by circles starting at this point right and this equation would be different because The equation for the new circles that are opening is actually times minus one divided by two. We're using Gauss's equation here, right? And this is where it gets complicated. It, it becomes a headache because um, for newly opened circles, so say you have five circles that just opened at uh, point three or point five or whatever, or actually let's take the real point at uh, point four. If we had um, at point four, we had uh, at point zero, uh, A of zero, we had uh, four circles open, right? So these circles would actually um, intersect uh, three, plus two plus one times or that would be four times uh, four minus one divided by two which is equal to twelve divided by two which is equal to six so now you may be wondering how I came up with that equation. Well, I didn't come up with it, this kid named Gostin. So if you have a running series like uh, this, of one, two, three, two, 
three, four. What they found out was that if you take the certain, like um, the start and end in pairs, like so. So you paired one plus four, and three plus two, right? What would happen is that uh, you would get the same number. So you have a five here, and you have a five here, right? So then the total here in this case would be a 10. And that is um, basically equivalent to this equation, which would be four times um, four times is it uh, n plus one or times n plus one divided by two, which would be four eight twelve. Now this would be 5 times 5 plus 1, 5 minus 1 divided by 4 times 4 plus 1, that would be 20 divided by 2 is equal to 10, right? So basically, um, this is a faster way to sum a series uh, increasing by one based on a pattern. So we're using a, a equation to simplify things. And then what would happen is um, we need to increase our open circles is equal to circle opens and then always we'd also have to um, take away our closed circles after this is done id x right because whenever a circle closes based on the uh, results we worked through we uh, um, it would reduce the amount of old circles contributing to the intersections. So that's the loop that we'll run through, and then we just return our intersections at the end of the day. All right, let's see if that works. And we made a mistake. I is not defined, so I used IDX here. Where did I use I? Oh, I used I there. That should have been IDX. I is not defined. We have another I somewhere. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. This had me scratching my head for a very long time. I didn't expect that this problem required so much um, math in order to cause a performance improvement. But um, yeah, sometimes there are challenging questions like this and you just have to figure out his trick. I think Goss's equation is one of those things that really uh, uh, cause uh, improvements. Okay, so we got almost 100%, but there is a problem because we forgot one of the edge cases. Could you think of what it was? Right? It's because when the results are over, um, when the results are over uh, 10 million, you have to return a negative one. So, let's fix that. When the number of intersections are over uh, 10 million, so, based on where you want to put it, I guess I'll just do it here. If intersection count is greater than 10, return 
negative one, and that was something that was asked for down here. The function should return negative one if the number of intersecting pairs exceeds 10 million. Okay. All right, so we got uh, correctness of 100%, performance of 100%, and we've solved a very, very challenging problem, in my opinion. It's because there was a trick, and to derive this formula on your own, unless you've encountered it before, you're just really smart, which is possible, is difficult. It'll take a bit of thought and working through it, right? The, the, key, the most difficult thing is understanding how to calculate the intersections. Once you got that, or if you're able to understand that by looking at the diagrams, you would have this solved. But if you had difficulty understanding the concept of an intersection, um, then it could complicate things. So yeah, that's all for now. Till next time.